In today's video, I'm making my first garment for this summer, and I'm making a double gauze white gathered skirt. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle. Welcome back to the Sopapia channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I put everything together, how to make this cute skirt that I was inspired by. My inspiration came from Casa de Fashion, and I loved this skirt when I saw it. It was airy, it was flowy, and it had the double slit skirt in the front, and I loved everything about it, and I wanted to challenge myself to see if I could make something similar to this. On the Casa de Fashion website, when they show this skirt, um, it shows that they have shearing at the waistline and um, I'm not that skilled yet to attempt that and I'm a little nervous about it so I didn't attempt it in this video but hopefully in another video um, I'll go ahead and attempt it so I went ahead and hacked the sewing pattern uh, new look 6282 and I used the skirt sewing pattern for style C and as you can see in this sewing pattern I only used the skirt pieces here below and it already has a double slit and that made my job a little bit easier in the skirt I had to DIY a waistband uh, which was fairly easy and this waistband is housing the elastic. I had to feed the elastic through the casing in the DIY waistband. So I'll show that in the video, but I hope you stick around. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I made this really cute summer skirt. And I'm gonna go over the fabric. The fabric choice for this project is 100% cotton. It's double gauze, and I got this from Fabric Wholesale Direct. And I'll have the link to this fabric below in the description. I will also have a list of everything that I used to make this skirt as well. Again, I'm hacking the sewing pattern New Look 6282 Style C, and everything I have in this video, I'll have linked below in the description. I'll be DIYing the pattern pieces for the waistband and the tie belt. So for this skirt project, I'm going to be using um, pieces number six the skirt front piece seven the skirt side front piece eight the skirt back and piece nine the skirt side back and the liner piece number ten I'm using the liner sewing pattern to trace out the design onto my fabric. And the nice thing about this piece, uh, number 10, is you can use it for the front and the back piece for the liner. Right here, I'm just ensuring that I have all of my markings on my fabric. And now I'm assembling the liner skirt. And with the right sides together, I'm just lining up all of my markings and I'm going to pin the side seams in place. And also along the edges, um, following the sewing patterns um, instructions at a uh, five eighths of an inch. Mm -hmm. 
After sewing the seam allowance, I'm going to go ahead and serge the edges. And if you don't have a serger, you can zigzag stitch along the edge and that'll work as well. Next up, I'm going to hem the liner and all I'm doing is folding over a half an inch once and then I'll fold it over again and then I'll just press it and sew along the edge with my sewing machine. And the liner is done for now. I'm going to go ahead and set it aside until I'm ready for it again. Now I'm working on the front of the skirt. I'm using pattern pieces six and seven, which is the front panel and the skirt side panel. Here, I'm just ensuring that all of my markings are lined up evenly. So right here I have pieces six here in the center. I have my side skirt, uh, piece number seven, and this is again piece number seven. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to, along the edges of each piece, I'm going to serge um, my raw ends, and then I'm going to piece them together and sew them at the seam. I'm going to serge first and then I'll be right back. If you don't have a serger, don't worry about that. You can always use your sewing machine. Just do a zigzag stitch close to the edge and that should be fine. I'm going to, with the right sides together, I'm going to attach the side skirt to the front piece and you don't want to pull, you just want to be a little gentle and go ahead and start pinning. Do the other side with the right sides together. Oops, it goes this way. Okay, so for each side of the skirt, we're going to sew along the edge from the waist all the way down to where the large dot marking was on the skirt pattern. So you don't want to sew right directly on top of it, but just above it. So from the waist all the way down to above the large dot. And we'll do that on both sides, this side, and we'll do it on this side. Okay, I just finished sewing up pieces six and seven, the front part of the skirt. And as you can see, I have serged edges. I just sewed up my seams and I'm going to lightly 
press my seams the way they can you can see what I'm working with here and here's the front part of the skirt and here are the side panels okay so now I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same steps for the back pieces When it comes time to sew the seam allowance on the back of the skirt, you'll want to sew from the waist all the way down to the hem, unless you want a double slit skirt in the back as well. If you do, then you'll want to stop at your midway point and not all the way to the hem. But for my skirt, I went ahead and sewed all the way down to the hem to have a closed back skirt. Here's the back of the skirt finished with the serge seams. <clears throat> Looks really nice. I'm going to go ahead and relabel these front and back. That way it's easier for you to see what I'm working with. And um, I, for now, I'm finished with the front and back pieces and I'm going to move along to the waistband. Now for the front and back skirt pieces, we're going to now want to make the waistband for the top of the skirt, for the waistline. So um, we're going to have to DIY this. So we're going to get the measurements for the front of the skirt. And we're going to get the measurements for the back of the skirt. So you'll want to fold the waistband in half and lightly press the folded edge. And then what I did is I measured a half an inch from the folded edge as well as the raw edge, a half an inch. And this is going to be my sewing guide for the elastic casing. By leaving a half an inch from the folded edge, this is going to leave the cutest gathered ruffle on the waistband. Since this fabric is very delicate, I'm going to go ahead and pin the edges and do a basting stitch along the edge. Now I'm going to sew the folded edge of the elastic casing. For now, I'm going to put the waistband aside and assemble the front of the skirt to the back of the skirt. I'm going to pin 
the side seams and continue to follow the sewing patterns instructions and sew the seam allowance of 5 8 of an inch and I'm going to sew from the waist all the way down to the hemline. To attach the lining, I'm going to have the skirt and liner with the wrong sides on the outside and the inside on the inside. I'm going to match my markings and my side seams together. I'll pin the edges and then I'll sew along the edge of the liner and skirt together at a half an inch. Your waistband may be a little different. My waistband measured 40 inches by 6 inches. And once I folded it in half, it is now 3 inches. Now we're going to close the waistband and attach the end pieces. We're going to sew along each side here at half an inch. And you're going to leave the center of it open. That way we can feed the elastic through. Once you sew the waistband closed, we're going to, with the folded edge facing downwards, you're going to feed the skirt through the waistband and attach the center of the waistband to the skirt and pin all the way around. And we're going to sew along the waistband at a half an inch. I don't want to confuse you, but you're going to sew starting from the flap all the way around the waistband to the flap. And don't worry about sewing over the seam allowance or the edges that are sewn together because we are going to serge off the raw edges. Next up, you'll want to measure out your elastic. You'll want to measure your high waist. And you'll want your elastic to be nice and snug, not too tight, but snug enough that it, it won't allow for your skirt to weigh down. I'm using a safety pin at the edge of my elastic to help guide the elastic through the casing. And all you do is find the opening to the casing and feed your elastic through. And this is a little time consuming, but we have so much room to work with that it shouldn't be that difficult. But I'm going to uh, fast forward this clip. That way we can get to the other side. And once you get to the other side, you'll want to pull the elastic out and make sure that you haven't flipped the elastic on the inside 
and you want to meet the ends of the elastic and sew about a half an inch at the edge. And all I did here was uh, do a zigzag stitch back and forth, back and forth. Oh, actually I didn't use the zigzag stitch. I just sewed forward and backward as I was doing um, a zigzag motion. Now that I'm finished with the elastic, I closed the opening to the casing where the elastic went through. And now I'm serging the raw edges of the seam allowance to have a nice finish. For the finishing touches, we're going to do a top stitch um, where the waistline meets the top of the skirt. We're going to work on the double slits in the front of the skirt. We're going to work on the hem. And we're since I didn't do shearing on the waistband, I'm going to um, go ahead and sew along the waistband to give a shearing effect. To get the shearing effect, what I did was I drew on with some tailor's chalk some um, guidelines in the center of the elastic in the waistband and I'm holding the fabric taut and I'm sewing along my guidelines. That way I can have um, some ruffled shearing effects that kind of looks similar to my inspiration photo for the sewing project. As you can see here, I finished at least two rows and I'm fixing to do another row and then I'll be finished. And as you can see, it actually came out so nice and it does give the shearing effect. To sew up my side slits, I folded the fabric over a half an inch once and pinned it. Now keep in mind, normally I would press my, um, my seams, that way that they look nice and crisp, but I decided not to do that because this is the double gauze fabric that I'm working with and I did not want to um, iron out the textured look. There's two ways you can finish the hem. You can serge the bottom of the hem and fold it over a half an inch and then sew it again close to the edge or you can just serge it and be done. And for my skirt, I decided to just serge the bottom hem and leave it at that and it came out so nice. Since this double gauze fabric is so textured and so fluffy, you can't even tell that it's not hemmed or tucked under and hemmed. But I love the results. If you don't want to make a tie belt, your skirt is actually done and ready to wear. But I chose to add an additional 
accessory to my skirt, which is the tie belt. That way I have the choice to wear the skirt with or without it. You're going to want to cut two pieces for your tie belts and I measured out uh, 55 inches by 6 inches. With the edges right side together, you'll want to sew along the edge a half an inch. With right sides together, you'll want to fold over the tie belt and match the seams. And then you'll want to lightly press the folded edge down. I'm sorry guys, uh, my battery died and I didn't capture how I cut the ends of the tie belt, but you'll see here shortly um, what they look like. So I'm gonna continue to pin the belt and then I'm going to sew along the edge from one side of the belt all the way to the other end and in the center where the center seam is you're going to leave a gap that way you can flip it inside out see right here is where the angle of the tie belt is you're going to see it again here on the other end and it's just a, a small triangle a half of a triangle. Now trim the excess close to the seam. You'll want to trim on both ends. And then flip the tie belt inside out. And once you have it inside out, you'll want to press it nicely. And then do a finish stitch all the way around the tie belt. And then we'll be finished. To close the opening, just tuck in the edge about a half an inch and give it a little press. And then when we go and do our finish stitch around the tie belt, we will go ahead and close this then.
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video right here. I hope you liked my summer skirt. It's actually my first piece of my summer wardrobe. So I'm really excited about that. I do have more videos coming for the remaining of my summer wardrobe. So I would love for you to come back and join me and possibly subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss out on a future video. And if you like the skirt that I made today, or if you feel like it was a good comparison to my inspiration, give me a big fat like. I would love it. It would mean so much to me. And um, keep tuning back for more videos, and I will see you next week. Bye.